If you have a photography business and you use a Mac, today I'm going to show you some tips on a software application that can help automate the boring parts of your business so that you can get to the fun creative parts of your business. Let's go. Hey there, Aaron here from techphotoguy.com. And today I'm going to talk about, as a Mac user, a piece of software that I use to automate some of the more tedious, administrative, boring parts of my photography ventures so that I can spend more time on the creative capture and editing side of things. So be sure to subscribe down below for more goodies like this. This is the first in a series of videos I'm doing for Automation August, where I'm going to look at some automations to help you become a better photographer and a better photographer business person. So stick around till the end. I've got a free download for you that's going to show you some of the formulas that I'm going to talk about here with this application. The application is called Hazel. It's from a company called NoodleSoft. One thing that's kind of cool is it's not a subscription. You pay for the application once, they give you free updates along the way. When there's a new major version release, there's a, a paid upgrade, and they've had five total major versions since the application was released in 2006, so they're not going to nickel and dime you along the way. It's definitely very reasonably priced. So what I'm going to do, let's dive into a screencast. I'm going to show you Hazel on my computer. You can see about a, you know five or six examples of what I'm doing with it, and then we'll wrap things up. So let's go. We are now looking at the Hazel window on my computer. I'm just going to show you a few simple scripts that I use here with Hazel. They're not really scripts. Uh, if you're able to configure an email filter, if you're able to do any sort of search like that, you are able to figure out how to use Hazel for some basic automation on your Mac. As I mentioned in the introduction, Hazel looks at folders and when files appear in folders or meet certain conditions in folders, Hazel will take action on them. And I'm going to show you a few just basic simple ones here that, you know, save me a few minutes here, a few seconds there that all add up. Uh, and then we're going to wrap up by looking at some of the other possibilities with Hazel uh, just to kind of spark some ideas for you. So let's start by talking about how Hazel can help me file things. So when something shows up and I want to store it away, here's how I use Hazel to do that um, in a couple different ways. If I click on downloads here, we can see what Hazel is monitoring in my downloads folder. One of the things I do every month is I download my business credit card statement, my business checking account statements from Chase, who is my bank. And these first two uh, rules that I have here, if I click on them, what you'll see over on the right hand side is it's looking for a file that shows up in my downloads folder with a couple conditions. And so it's looking for a file with a name that contains a number fragment here that is part of my account number um, and does not contain business credit card in this case. And then it renames that file to Chase Business Credit Card, the original file name with the extension. And then it continues matching rules. So what this means is it's renamed this file to a more meaningful name, and then it's gonna keep running the rest of the rules here that I have specified. I have one that does the same thing for my business checking account as well. And then there's a rule farther down that says, hey, if you've got a file that starts with Chase Business, like my credit card and checking account files were just renamed to, move it to a folder. And which folder is it moving to? It is moving it to my DevonThink inbox folder. Now, explaining DevonThink is a bit beyond the scope of this video, but DevonThink is kind of like a digital file cabinet on steroids. Um, I would encourage you to check that out. I'll, I'll drop a link down in the, the description of the video, but uh, DevonThink helps you store, search, manage, organize any sort of digital files on your computer. Um, it's my digital filing cabinet, and so this will automatically save my bank statements into DevonThink. Now, in DevonThink, there's some magic that happens once they get there, but again, we're just looking at Hazel today. So one thing I file is my bank statements. Another thing that I you know, file automatically is my ConvertKit backup. So I use ConvertKit for my email service provider. Again, I'll drop a link down below if you wanna know a little bit more about that, but Every month, I download my subscriber list from ConvertKit because just if in case something were to go wrong with my ConvertKit account, I want to make sure I have that backed up. And so I know that when I download it, 
the file is going to be a CSV file. It's going to say that it came from, you know, a, a server that starts with CK exports. Um, and I rename that file with subscribers in it, and then I move it to a backup folder that's synced off to a cloud storage location. So again, I just download the file to my downloads folder, and then Hazel takes care of moving it for backup. We'll look at how those backups get cleaned up here in just a little bit. So one other thing that I use uh, Hazel to file is uh, routine invoices or receipts. So I use Hey for my email, and every month they send me a statement saying that, you know, we charged you for your monthly business email. And again, I don't want to have to file this automatically, but I do want to keep it around for tax purposes. So I just download the file to my download folder. Their file name starts with Hey Invoice. And so this one's really straightforward. If the file name starts with that, move it to my inbox. And again, that inbox is my DevonThink inbox where some additional processing happens. But Hazel gets it there to start with. All right, so that's that's a couple ways on how I use Hazel to do some filing for me. Now let's talk about how I use Hazel to clean some things up automatically. Uh, so I talked about um, my backup folder that's synced off to the cloud. So if I go to the backup folder over here on the left, you can see that I have a rule to delete my old ConvertKit backups. So as I mentioned, I download them monthly, but I don't need to keep these forever, right? So I have a condition here where if the name starts with subscribers, it's a CSV. I know that those are the only things that go in this folder that match those rules. And if the date added is not in the last three months, it moves it to the trash. So basically that's gonna let me uh, keep a couple copies of my backups, but anything older gets deleted automatically. Uh, if I go to my desktop folder here, I wanna look at this delete old screenshots one because this is kind of interesting. You know, on a Mac, when you create a screenshot, it drops it onto your desktop, either with the native Mac screenshot tools or using CleanShot X, which is a program I like to use. Um, either way, I have them go to my desktop. And so what you'll see is on the conditions here, it starts by looking to say, hey, if any of these conditions are met, so it's a name that starts with screenshot, which means it's a default, you know, Mac OS screenshot, or it's a name that starts with clean shot, uh, and it's an image, and the date added is not in the last seven days, so not in the last week, just move that to the trash. I take a lot of screenshots for the work that I do, but, you know, if I haven't done anything with them in a week, this isn't where they go, right? If I took a screenshot and I'm going to use it, I will have renamed it or moved it somewhere else. If it's still sitting there with the default name after a week, clearly it's not that important, and I can just go ahead and trash it. And you know, my trash sits there for 30 days. So if something were to happen on accident, it's not gone permanently. It's out there waiting to have, uh, you know, waiting to be restored if needed. So one other thing I want to talk about as far as cleaning up, you know, in my downloads folder, I have an aging documents cleanup rule. So I don't generally work with Microsoft Word files. So if I have a doc or docx file sitting in my downloads folder, it's a temporary thing because I would have, you know, saved it off somewhere. I would have converted it to a PDF. Maybe I edited it, send it back to somebody. But if it's sitting around there and it's been more than 10 days, again, just move it to the trash. Clean that up automatically for me so that I don't have to think about it. Let's take a look at, uh, let's go out here. I'm just going to go to desktop. I'm going to, I'm going to hit this create new rule button just so we can take a look at some of the parameters that you have to work with here. So these are all the things here that you can choose from as criteria to have Hazel look at to decide whether or not to take an action. So we've looked at a few of these, like name and file type and the source and things like that. So we can look at, you know, name, when did it get there? Uh, you know, what are the dates? Uh, what kind is it? If you use tags or color labels on your Mac, you can, uh, you know, use those features. Um, and you'll see like, as you choose color label, it gives you a nice picker here to figure all that out. Um, you know, size, if it's, you know, bigger than a certain size, you know, bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes. Uh, so if you wanted action to be taken on big files only, you know, the source URL, we, we saw that with the ConvertKit backup. Um, you can use scripting here as well, AppleScript, 
script, shell scripts. So there's a lot of conditions that you can use and you can say any of these, all of these, none of these, you can nest rules together and have, you know, sub rules underneath them. Um, you know, you can make some you know, complex logic here depending on what you want to do. And then there's a lot of actions that you can take. You can move a file, copy, rename it, uh, upload it, add tags, remove tags, set a color label. Uh, you can open a file. So you can have Hazel, you know, actually open or execute a file. You can have it show up in Finder. Uh, you can automatically import into photos. So, hmm, as a photographer, this is interesting. Maybe if I put images in a certain place, I automatically want them to be imported into Apple Photos. Again, I can run shortcuts, Apple script, JavaScript, run an automator workflow, run a shell script. So if you have advanced scripting tools, Hazel can automatically find files and send them off to those advanced tools. If something that matches a Hazel rule is a folder, you can tell Hazel to, hey, run the rules on all these things within that subfolder. Hazel can display a notification. So if you want to know what's going on, you can have Hazel do that. And you can also even set a rule to ignore something. So maybe you want to ignore a certain type of file, but act on the other ones. So that's been a quick tour of a few ways I use Hazel. It's an interesting tool. I'd encourage you to check it out. All right, as I mentioned, I have a download for you. The link is in the description down below. You can grab a PDF with a bunch of screenshots of those formulas, those rules that I showed you in that screencast. Those are some simple automations that I use. You know, I've got links in the description to all the apps and services that I mentioned. Um, and it's a great resource for you to get started with Hazel, you know, looking at just some basic automations that you can do so you spend less time doing janitorial work on your computer, right? So if you found this interesting, be sure to like the video, hit subscribe so that YouTube knows that it's useful. Uh, I'm gonna be back at you again with more automation goodness in the next few weeks here for Automation August. Uh, drop me a comment, let me know what you thought. Was this helpful? Do you have a question? Is there something you're curious how you might do with Hazel? Let me know and I'll help you out there in that comment section. So again, take care.